Hello, my name is John Graves. I'm with Oracle and I wanted to uh, start to demonstrate and show how to work with some of the new devices that are coming out from uh, the Sigfox uh, Thinkstra group. And so they sent me a couple of devices to play with and start to uh, look at. One of them was this thing called the Oyster. It's a GPS tracker. It's a smart one. It holds about uh, three AA batteries inside that, re, that you can change those if you like and it lasts for years and you just put this on a, on a vehicle or put it in a bag somewhere and it will send GPS coordinates into the, um, the Sigfo Sigfox network automatically. It's a smart tracker in that it uh, only sends data when it senses that it's moving so it's got a, the ability to sense the vibrations and so forth and so it starts sending and when it's at idle, when it doesn't move, it doesn't send data, so it can uh, be used uh, in those kind of environments and last a very long time. The other uh, device is called the uh, X Kit, and it's uh, just a developer kit, so you can begin to play with the APIs and so forth to get data into the Sigfox network. Uh, this particular one sits on top of an Arduino board, so you can program it to do pretty much anything you like, but um, mainly for development, not necessarily for uh, anything that you do in a production environment, but get a good feel for uh, how to work with uh, the Thinkster guys in the uh, Sigfox network. So I want to get these to be sending data into the Oracle IoT cloud service and show how that's done and make sure it is clear uh, for anybody that's using these devices or want to use these devices with the Oracle IoT. So let's get started. So I want to start just to uh, show you a little bit about what the uh, Sigfox uh, screen looks like when you log into their system to uh, take a look at the devices that have been registered. Uh, this registration was done for me before the devices arrived, but as you can see I've got uh, two kits that are defined here. Uh, one is the Oyster and the other is the X kit. So that there's two different device types. So that's one view here. And then if we take a look at devices, this is the individual instances of the device. Uh, we have three. We have two of the X kits and one of the oysters. And so what we do is uh, inside of here, we can take a look and, and notice when data is passing through. Um, <clears throat> Thinkster has their own uh, visualization for the oyster and the GPS coordinates and, and how that all works. And we can also take a look based on device type, what we want to do with the data that it comes in. So in here, we have uh, this, uh, this, uh, this X kit, for example. We can go in and uh, take a look at it and show how this callback is set up. So there's different types of things that are done here. Um, you can set up callbacks for uh, the data that's there, uh, some service kind of callbacks, uh, and some error kind of callbacks. And so I've got a couple things here. The destination can be as simple as a, an email address uh, or a, a REST service call, which I have both of these here. So I'll just show you what I set up for the REST service call. Uh, the data that comes in uh, has some binary data. It's all defined in the uh, development documentation, but uh, there are different uh, bits and bytes that are set up, and you can tell it how to parse that data through this uh, mechanism. And then the variables that you get through that payload uh, can then be used down here in the, uh, the body of the message. So that's what I have, the, the standard data types as well as the specific types for the X kit, for example, temperature, uh, pressure, uh, how much light the photo, and whether or not it's uh, moving in which direction. So this is the data that this X kit will produce uh, when it's uh, when it sends data. And so this this particular X kit that I have here, uh, as I said before, it's sitting on top of an Arduino board, and uh, this is the sensors as well as the communication via the network into the Sigfox network. So there's no Wi-Fi configuration or anything like that. Uh, once you plug it in and you get data coming from that, then it just sends it. And just a simple Arduino code that was uh, flashed on there via USB. A uh, little bit of trickiness in that you have to remove these two um, uh, connectors when you flash it, put them back on when you're done flashing. Uh, and there's a little bit of issues where you have to uh, do a bit of twiddling with the, the uh, connectors for a battery connection versus a USB power connection. So for most development environments, the USB power is fine. I've got the battery set up just because I've been demonstrating this 
uh, without the computer because once you have it flashed and ready to go, you just boot it and start sending data. Uh, it sends data periodically, I think every uh, 10 minutes or so, uh, or there's a, a small button right here that you can press and you'll see that there's a, a blue light that'll flash once the uh, that blue light flashes whenever it sends data. Uh, there's also apparently a magnetic uh, 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 sensor in here. I haven't really tried that or played with it, but uh, if you bring a magnetic kind of uh, field or put this near a magnetic field, it will also send data. So a couple of different ways. If it was enclosed in a box, you could uh, bring a magnet to it to uh, force it to send the data or just allow it to send the data periodically. As you can see, it's sending data right now. So if we go back, uh, that sends data in the format that's uh, shown uh, up here on the screen, and then uh, that's parsed and then sent to a given location that you want to uh, based on your URL. So that's pretty straightforward. In the um, Oracle side of things, I had to create uh, some things. First, going in and creating the device type. So this idea of a model that is uh, for this X kit and for the Oyster I have those both of those. So if we um, do a little bit of a filter here, so we can see specifically the device types. Oh, misspelled. So you can see there's a couple device types here. Uh, the X kit. If we take a look at the details, very simple um, matching. So uh, we have some. Oracle kinds of attributes that you can set up when you're using the API. Uh, custom attributes, so time, device, uh, duplicate, SR, etc. This matches identically to the data that comes in here time, device, uh, SR, RSSI. So that's uh, how it knows how to match those and all the information. And this was just created via a simple REST call that I put on the blog as how to do that. And then for each uh, type of call, so these are the standard uh, standard messages or so forth that come in. Uh, the lat and the long are the base station, not the device that's coming in uh, in this case. And it can send some data or service calls or errors. And each of these has uh, a few other additional items like temperature, pressure, photo, X, Y, and Z um, accelerators. So all that's there. And this is how the device is configured. And then the code itself goes back and um, uh, does the uh, activation of these. So if I go back here again and take a look at these device types, there's also the Oyster. So if you take a look quickly at the Oyster, it's very similar in the data, uh, uh, the device time, etc. There's a lat long here for the base station that it's uh, that is able to it's communicating with but also uh, inside of the data itself for this particular one, I have a lat long for the GPS tracker. So this is an accurate location of where the device is uh, and its current heading and speed, et cetera. So creating this device type was simply mapping uh, the definition of this callback for the different devices. And if I show you quickly the Oyster as well. I'm gonna call back for that quite straightforward and here it is and that's the data but here it has uh, station lat long and separate from the lat long that comes from the message payload the data payload so that is the configuration of the device type so now these callbacks uh, do get called for a given di device whenever something happens so if I go and look at an instance of this for example this is my X kit here and I take a look at the, uh, uh, the messages. You'll see uh, the current link quality of the system and uh, what when uh, the last message came through and which callbacks were called. So in this case, I have a callback to uh, my email address as well as to my uh, bridge that sends it to the IoT. So in this case, if we take a look at this, um, our latest one was at 922. So if I then uh, go over to my uh, Sigma or my uh, X kit here and press the button. See the blue light is flashing there. Uh, and then we can go back and take a look and refresh uh, this screen and take a look and make sure we've got a new one uh, at 926. So this is the latest one. 
and uh, of course it sent this data off. We can take another view of the Oracle IoT cloud here and look at messages and alerts. So alerts are kind of error messages or uh, status messages and, and data messages are here. So we can see here that also at 926 uh, we receive the data uh, that's the XKIT data and if we take a look at the payload we can see uh, all the information that's came the current temperature and uh, pressure and so forth so that is from the X uh, the X kit now if we take a look at the other device which is the oyster uh, we can see that uh, for this case if we take a look at this one and the messages that it produced uh, last one was at 925 here and the easiest way to uh, get this message to uh, produce additional uh, data is by just picking up the oyster and kind of shake it so pretend like it's moving drop it or something maybe if you drop it you end up getting a different event but uh, that should trigger um, it to send data in a, as it's moving so 925 uh, still hasn't come through yet but we can try again Here's the message it finally came through there. I just uh, didn't uh, move it properly or something, but I've got a message here that came in and uh, sent to the different callbacks. And we should see that then at uh, 936 here on the uh, update this screen. And you can see the different data types here. So we've got the Oyster data at uh, 936, and it has the payload from there, including lot long and stuff which uh, all is quite accurate so all good and that shows the communication last thing I want to show you is a little bit about uh, how that gets hooked into um, the Oracle cloud from uh, the bridge itself so the bridge is just a little bit of code uh, based on the specifications and requirements for it to uh, modify the data a little bit the lot long uh, need to have a, a, a little bit of variation and, and a few other simple things. But if I go in and take a look at my application container cloud service, I have a bridge defined there, which allows that uh, communication to go. So if I come up here and take a look at this XKIT bridge, which was the original uh, name, it's now uh, generalized to be able to handle both the, the Oyster and the XKIT but inside of here, it uh, is running that uh, basic uh, node code and one instance. What's nice about this is uh, it can run this kind of code very simply if I wanted to or if I had lots of data going through this for some reason. Um, I can increase the number of instances or memory and uh, there's an automatic load balancing that takes place and so it's very simple to configure this uh, instance and instance of data and get it running. So this is the code where the code runs that bridges the gap between the two systems and and so the uh, code for this that's uh, running here is a very simple I don't know a few lines uh, of code that uh, basically define the Oracle IoT environment and then use a simple express for uh, creating some simple REST services to it and uh, after setting up uh, the communication uh, simple send data. The key here though is that if the device isn't found it will automatically uh, go in and um, if it's found it's fine. If it's not found it will do a registration. So it does a create device and uh, activates it. So those two steps will, if a new device shows up that uh, the Oracle IoT has never seen before, it creates that all automatically for you and then in either case it then just does this device send data. So Literally 80% uh, of this is uh, exception handling and logging. A very simple, uh, and here's the code, for example, the X kit has a bit of um, uh, data manipulation on the different data types, and the uh, payload for the Oyster has a bit of lot long and heading uh, uh, modification. So other than that, this code just passes it right on to the Oracle IoT for consumption. Once it's in the uh, Oracle IoT environment, then of course 
you can begin to start looking at uh, using some of uh, the apps that are uh, available uh, for asset tracking and so forth. So I haven't gone through and set, set all that up, but uh, be able to track those assets and uh, be able to monitor them through the uh, asset monitoring or perhaps the uh, uh, fleet management would be another really good environment for this data for the uh, Oyster. So that's a little bit of the demo on showing how the data flows from the uh, different Sigfox Thinkstra devices into their environment and use callbacks into the Oracle environment to get the data into the IoT cloud. Thanks for listening.